Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. And it has been some time since we have uh, uh, done a teaching video over here on the Noon Institute because it seems like every time I'm doing a video, you can't really load it anywhere because you got to worry about, uh, well, you know, YT and their censorship. I don't think this video is going to be an issue, so we're going to be able to upload it today. Uh, I'm actually on our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org, and the reason I'm here is because if you're watching right across the top of the video right now, you're seeing a new address, uh, those of you that support the ministry. And I haven't updated our website as of yet because I'm the guy that's got to do it, unfortunately. Our web guy, Jamie, has, seems to fell off the face of the earth. Can't seem to get in touch with him anymore. So at any rate, uh, I need to get in there and update the address there. But right now, it'll always appear above the videos themselves, right above where you're seeing the website part right now. Stephen Ben Noon, P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872 is the zip code there. <clears throat> we appreciate your support of this ministry. Now, um, a lot of interesting things I want to talk to you about uh, tonight. And, uh, of course, some of it's going to be on our news channel instead. And But this is, to me, probably the, one of the most insightful teachings that God has ever laid on my heart. And it's simple, but it speaks volumes. And so I wanted to share this with you tonight because I think it'll, it'll, maybe it'll touch your heart in the same way in which it touched mine as well. Uh, if we go back first off, we're going we're gonna to be looking at uh, the, the Gospel of John, chapter 6. This is where Jesus feeds the multitude. And, uh, but we're also going to be looking in the book of Numbers, all right, in the book of Numbers. I want to start off here in the book of Numbers real quick, and there's a couple of things that we should look at in regards to this. If you're looking here, I, I jumped over here because of the mixed multitude and the Hebrew word that is used there, asuf, uh, asuf suf. All right. It's a promiscuous assemblage of people when it says a mixed multitude. And I've got some other thoughts thinking behind that, uh, which was, and of course, this is the King James Version here. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell lusting. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish which we did eat and the Egypt freely and the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. Now, let me jump back over to the, to the Hebrew version here. And it's just interesting. God, you know, had, he, he was so mindful of them that he knew they were in the desert. He knew they didn't have the food. I mean, he knew that they had fish and he knew that they were having the cucumbers and the leeks and the melons back in Egypt. But he also knew that they had whips on their backs and they were being, uh, they were basically had become slaves to the Egyptian taskmasters. Uh, it was a horrible situation down in Egypt that they were, that they were dealing with. But I just think it's interesting when we look at this. Zavachanu echad All right. We remember the fish, which we would want to eat in Egypt for naught. It's like for nothing. They, they, just, they just could do it. And they were so just loathing the manna that God had sent them instead. And I suppose if you eat the same thing over and over every day, I guess that would get old. But the point is, is that God was giving them this, this food free. Nothing, they didn't labor for anything. And yet they were complaining. Well, let's take a look at the situation here over in the Gospel of John chapter 6. And I think it might come into a clear view what's going on. Don't forget, it was a mixed multitude, a promiscuous group, right? Promiscuous. 
After these things, Jesus went over to the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain. There he sat with his disciples, and the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes, he saw a great company come unto him, and he said to Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, yet every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves, two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now therefore, Excuse me, now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in the number about 5,000. And Jesus took up the loaves, and when he had give thanks, he distributed the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. And they were filled, and he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. And see, by the way, if you notice... Jesus first talked about just giving them the bread. It's one of his disciples, one of his apostles, that mentioned that there's a little boy there that's got five barley loaves and two small fishes. Right? Think about it. Now, I don't think there was any coincidence that the fish were there. And I think you'll see why where, where I'm going with this in just a second here. And Jesus took the loaves, right? He gave thanks. He blessed it. He did that same likewise with the fish. And then he, then he just multiplied it. Therefore, they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with fragments and the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. And those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This of a truth, that prophet should come into the world. Now, even that statement right there, this is one of the people that, that saw the miracles that made that statement. What prophet is he talking about? Moses, because remember, the whole story is right at Passover. After Passover, the children of Israel leave Egypt. They go down into the desert. They're dwelling out there. You know, then they're hungering, they're starving, they're, they're thirsting to death. Actually, they thirst to death first nearly. And, and then God gives them water from the rock, which that rock was Christ Jesus. Then later, they're hungry, they're, they, they have nothing to eat. And so God takes and gives them bread, manna. Manehu actually is the Hebrew expression used there. Literally means, like, what is it? What is this? That's, that's where we get, because they were wandering around looking at it. What is this? That's where they get the expression manehu. It doesn't say lechem. It doesn't say bread. But at any rate, God was sustaining them, giving them bread and giving them water. And of course, even back then, it was everything's types and shadows. And that's what Jesus is going to say, speak about here. And so when Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take, excuse me, back up, I missed this part here. Uh, then these men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said this truth as a prophet should come into the world. And when Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. And when even was now come, his disciples went down into the sea, and he entered into a ship and went on to the sea toward Capernaum. And it was now dark, and Jesus was not come to them. Now, we kind of know everything that happens there. You know, they, they run into, uh, uh, you know, the ship begins to get, the, the water is rising up. Jesus walks on the water. All kinds of beautiful types that I've shared with you guys in the past that are there. But I want to go on down. Uh, Let's start back at verse 22. The day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save that one where, whereinto his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone, howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread, and after that the Lord had given thanks. And when the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, whence comest thou hither? 
And Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, You seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. He goes on to say then, labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus said unto them, this is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he hath sent. They said, therefore, unto him, What sign showest thou then, that we may see and believe thee? What doest thou work? Our fathers did eat man in the desert, and as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then, said, then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not the bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that you also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that all of which he hath given me, I should lose nothing but raise it up again at the last day. As this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven. Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent him, draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets that they shall be taught of God. Every man therefore that here hath, hath heard, excuse me, every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is, the, which is of God. And he hath seen the Father, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me has everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. All right, now, there's a couple of things we want to look at here. Jesus goes on and says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. All right. I, I had to read all of this to kind of get to a certain place here to where you can see some things here, right? I'm going to kind of, kind of highlight this real quick so we can come right back to it. One there, the, the, the multitude that came, Jesus, you know, he said to them, you didn't come, you didn't come over here, be, be, you know, you, you, they basically he's telling them, you came because you, you got fed. You came because you ate the bread, right? But it, to me, it was no coincidence, though, that he also multiplied fish. Because notice how he does this. As he begins to speak to them, you know, they, they like to go back and say, you know, our fathers, you know, they ate the bread, you know, Moses multiplied it and they ate the bread that was in the wilderness. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but as he says on here, right, your fathers did eat man in the wilderness and are dead. Their fathers are also the same ones that were over here in the book of Numbers. That although they were eating of the manna, they were eating that bread that came down. And yes, it, Christ is the one that actually brought that bread down to them. But they were also lusting and remembering the fish. And not just the fish, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But they actually loathed the bread. They hated it. Now, 
I don't think it's by coincidence that Jesus then actually, when the little boy comes up there and he's got these five barley loaves and, and two fish there, and he makes them sit down and he multiplies both bread and fish. Why? Because the fish was the first thing that they were speaking about that they lusted for, their forefathers, that is. And not only did they eat the bread, the manna itself, but that manna did not give them eternal life. As he said, your fathers, yeah, sure they ate it, but they're dead. You see, it was a mixed multitude that came out, a promiscuous multitude. And isn't it interesting that when Jesus is speaking here, he continually speaks about how that, you know, all that my father has given me, they'll come to me. See, all that the father giveth me shall come to me and him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. There it is right there. For I come down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the father's will of which has sent me, that of which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. You see, I find it fascinating. Jesus is not going to lose any that the Father has given him. But if you remember, there's a mixed multitude that came out. There it is right there. That mixed multitude that came out. And the mixed multitude... That promiscuous group were the ones that they just would that we were given flesh to eat. There's nothing wrong. You can eat the fish. It's not, that's, this is not the point I'm trying to make here. What I'm trying to make here so you understand this is that when Jesus multiplied broke bread, he also multiplied fish. He was giving them a sign. They talked about wanting a sign. And they got it. Nobody paid attention to that, but they actually got the sign. One, he was able to create more bread. He was able to create more fish for them. They didn't even have to ask for it. They got it anyway. But I think it's fascinating because then he goes on to say, all that the Father hath given me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Isn't it fascinating? Now, then he goes on. I am that bread of life. Your fathers eat man in the wilderness and are dead. In other words, that's also that speaks so 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 much volumes towards law. Because even when it comes to the law that Moses give, the law doesn't save you. The manna didn't save them. It didn't give them eternal life. What he gave, his own life, would. But he gets even more difficult, though, as he goes down, though. I mean, then he gets into, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. All right? Now, he does, here, here's what's interesting. He doesn't explain. He's going to get even more blunt. The Jews, therefore, strove among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whosoever, whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Can you, I mean, I mean, listen, we look at this and we think, oh, that's no big deal. We get it. Yeah, we know. I mean, you know, Jesus really meant that spiritually. You know, how, I mean, how could it be so dumb to think that he meant it literally? Do you forget what happened before the flood with the fallen angels? What were they doing? According to the book of Enoch, they ate human beings and they drank their blood. So when Jesus says in the last day, Matthew 24, he said it'll be as it was in the day of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking and giving and given and given in marriage. And you go back to the book of Enoch, you find out they were cannibalists. They were eating the people and drinking their blood. Now, 
Later, Jesus helps his disciples to understand what was really going on there. He shows it was symbolic. But with them, he was a little bit different. And I think he was different in that way for a reason. Because he knows, as, as there's another scripture, you know, they ask him, you know, Lord, why do you speak in parables? Let's just look it up. Why speakest thou in parables? I believe is how it is. At. In parables. Yeah, I think it's right here. Matthew 13, 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. You understand? So the point is, he was speaking in a parable about this here. And he goes on, For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, I live by the Father. So he that eateth me even shall live by me. Now that was a mouthful, wasn't it? This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. He made it look as if it was like in the days before the flood. That's not what he, that's not what he was, he wasn't, he said it, let me put it that way, he said it to shock them, no doubt. But again, it was a parable. And they couldn't get beyond the parable. But he also gave that beautiful sign. He gave them the fish. Why? Their forefathers. They didn't have to worry about lusting for it this time. Not only could he multiply the bread, but he also could give them the fish without them even asking. And I am just blown away by this. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that, excuse me, who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. You see, so he kind of gives them a little bit better understanding right there. You know, when he asked, did it offend you? What if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was, was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh of profiteth, not, profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Okay, there it was right there. He tells you right there what he was saying. It's spirit and life. The life is the chayim that was within him, which is the life of Almighty God that would be imparted back upon the believers. This is what it really was. But everything Jesus did when he was here was for a reason. And this is why, as I go back and I read the scriptures and stuff, I am just blown away at the simplest of details that we tend to overlook. I trust it's a blessing for you. Thank you for listening, and God bless you for listening. Uh, listen to a news broadcast I'm going to actually probably do in the morning. We're going to be looking at China. Going deeper, though, on this China connection here. If Biden gets into power, which it is looking very scarily like he will, you remember he talked about opening the borders with China, excuse me, with Mexico and Canada. When he does that, 
we will be in big trouble in this country. We will be, as it was said to me, we will be in checkmate. But I've got to do some very deep research on this because I've been given some very good information on how to follow all of this information. The Clintons have been working with China for 20 plus years. But I'm going to be sharing some very in-depth. I don't know if I can pull it off tomorrow or not, but that's going to be a very special broadcast. A look into the China conspiracy and who is running China. It's not who you think it is. I'm Steve Benoon. You're listening to the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope this message was simple enough but would also bless you as well.